In this video, we're going to take a look at applying our understanding of enzyme reactions and looking at some sample data and how you might go about analyzing it. So when you're doing an enzyme reaction, you can pretty much measure how the substrate is being used up or the product being formed. And you can vary it by changing the temperature. You can vary it by changing the substrate concentration. You can vary it by changing the pH, or you can also introduce an inhibitor, a competitive or non-competitive inhibitor. There's a bunch of different things that you can do. So in this particular example, we're just gonna take a look at one of the most famous uh, experiments, which is using catalase from potatoes and hydrogen peroxide. And ba the basic reaction here is that the catalase enzyme is helping to catalyze the breakdown of hydrogen peroxide to water and oxygen. And in this case, what we're going to do is we're not going to measure the breakdown, the disappearance of hydrogen peroxide. We're going to measure the appearance of one of the products. And oxygen is one of the products. If you have a gas product being formed in any kind of experiment, it's usually a good uh, easy way to kind of measure the production of a gas. You can trap it or since the gas is going to disappear, you can just let it go into the air and you can measure decreases in mass. So that's what we're going to try to do here. So let me just reveal everything and then we can take a look, make sure we're really understanding what's going on here. So we have our little beaker here and inside the beaker we're going to have our mixture and we're putting it on a scale and we're going to measure what's happening with the scale. We assume that as the reaction proceeds, the mass is going to get lighter because the product that's being made, oxygen, because it's a gas, is going to just float up into the air and disappear. And based on the idea of conservation of mass, if the oxygen is leaving, then we should find the whole system here should actually get lighter. So here you can see some sample data that I've collected. So after I've added catalase, the enzyme, into the mixture, here's my time. I did it for 10 minutes. And in the beginning, I'm just using some nice numbers here. In the beginning, the mass of the mixture was exactly 100 grams. After two minutes, it's 80 grams. So something is happening. I'm definitely losing mass here. And based on my background knowledge and my background research, I can assume that the mass is decreasing because the oxygen is being released. So my experiment is done and I've collected my data. So how can I reorganize my data? How can I process my data in order to calculate a rate and be able to plot this rate of mass decrease? So it's very simple. All we have to do is take our data and separate it out into time intervals. So what I'm finding here is so I can just take the z timings that I have and turn them into time intervals. So between zero and two minutes, between zero and two minutes, the mass decreased by 20 grams. So I'm doing some calculations here. Between two and four minutes, my new time interval, my mass decreased by 15 grams, and so on and so forth. And I end up with five time intervals and five mass decreases. So that should be fine. And I've already got my minutes. And then I've also got uh, my mass. But just to make the numbers a little easier to plot for me so I don't have a lot of uh, mm, decimal places up here, I'm going to convert the grams into milligrams. I know that there are 1,000 milligrams in every gram, so I just multiply each of these numbers by 1,000. And so here I have my mass decrease expressed in milligrams. And then all I have to do is take my data and do a little bit further processing. Those of you who are having trouble understanding the idea of rate, a rate is just a change in some unit over time. So it's measuring the change of something over time. So you'll, you'll always have to see, you'll never see a rate unit as just seconds, or you'll never see a rate unit as just milliliters or grams. It'll have to be milligrams per second or milliliters per second or some kind of unit over a second. You can write it like this, like we did in elementary school, mg uh, with a slash and an s, it means mg divided by s. Or you can write it like this, mg times s to the power of negative one. If you understand your uh, algebra and everything like that, you know that this just means the s goes underneath the milligram. So I did my final calculations and I end up like this. So how did I get the rate 167 here? Well, because the rate is milligrams per second, I have my milligram change as 167. I have my, my milligram change of 167, and I need to divide that by seconds I've decided to use. I could plot this as minutes and just divide 20,000 divided by two minutes, but I decided to express my rate in seconds, so I have 
20,000 divided by, well, how many seconds are in two minutes? 120. So 20,000 divided by 120 gives me this number, 167. I've done the same thing. Just one more repeat calculation check. I did 15,000 divided by 120 seconds in two minutes. So 15,000 divided by 120 gives me this number. Now, that's it. I have my time here and then I have my rate and I can calculate, I can plot my changes here and then I get basically my graph showing how the rate of reaction is changing over time and I can see that it is decreasing. This gives us more information than simply plotting the decrease in the mass. We can actually see if the rate is speeding up or slowing down as a result of looking at these things. So if you're designing an experiment, make sure you're taking it to the next level and you're actually calculating rate and not just a simple change in mass. That's how you can take a simple experiment and increase its complexity and uh, deepen the analysis a little bit. Okay, good luck with that.